good evening everybody and welcome to today's episode of marvelous medicine the session is on medical humanities and uh, there has been a lot of uh, you know discussion about uh, what actually it is and most people seem to be confused and uh, you know professor nandi even said it's mumbo jumbo so we have uh, dr puneet who is going to moderate the session he's a professor and head of gi and hpp surgery and liver transplant at the all india institute of medical sciences rishikesh MBBS from Maulana Azad Medical College, MS General Surgery from Subdarjan Hospital, and MCA GI Surgery from GB Pant Hospital, Delhi. His senior clinical fellowship in transplant surgery at Adam Brooks Hospital, Cambridge University Hospitals, UK, and worked there as a locum consultant. He is the head of department of uh, gastrointestinal and he was the head of department of gastrointestinal and hepatobiliary surgery at Amrita Institute before he moved to Rishikesh. He has over 60 publications. He has uh, contributed to 15 book chapters and monographs. He's on the editorial board of many journals and has been the principal investigator in many trials. He's an avid teacher, a member of several scientific bodies, and has been a great supporter of marvelous medicine. Uh, thank you, Dr. Puneet, for putting this uh, unusual panel together for this unusual topic. Um, joining us uh, from Mumbai will be Dr. Rajalakshmi Iyer. Thank you, Dr. Rajalakshmi, for joining despite having. just moved from rishikesh and having other personal commitments dr rajalakshmi was until recently the professor and head of department of medical humanities and the professor of physical medicine and rehabilitation at aims rishikesh did her mbbs from grant medical college and her post graduation in physical medicine and rehabilitation from the national board um she has delivered lectures and designed modules in medical humanities for undergraduate post graduates nurses and faculty She has a wide experience in collaborative work with other specialties. She was a founder member of the Unit of Hope, a multidisciplinary clinic, and uh, in the Saint John's Medical College, Bangalore, <clears throat> and uh, which works for comprehensive management for children with disability. Actually, they have a standalone building, uh, which probably all the hard work was put by Raj Lakshmi and others over the past years. has worked with the ngo association of people with disability which runs outreach clinics for spinal cord injury patients is also a consultant for the hemophilia federation of karnataka dr raj lakshmi has been a part of many clinical trials and she strongly believes and works for sustainable uh, living she is a trained bharatanatyam dancer and avid bird watcher and very interested in art history and temple architecture welcome once again dr raj lakshmi Joining her will be Dr. Geeta Negi. She is the professor and head of Department of Transfusion Medicine and Blood Bank at AIMS Rishikesh. She did her MBBS and MD from King George Medical College, Lucknow. Fellowship in Transfusion Medicine from Colombo. She is a famous fellow and has also done a certificate course in medical education from the University of Dundee. Dr. Geeta's special interests are regenerative medicine, apheresis, quality management systems, and medical education. And she has established the advanced blood transfusion services in Uttarakhand. Dr. Geeta has over sixty publications and has received many awards, including the Him Ratna Award by the government of Uttarakhand. Last but not the least, we have Dr. Neeti Gupta. She is the associate professor, Department of Ophthalmology, and also a faculty of the Medical Humanities <clears throat> Department at AIMS Rishikesh. Her MBBS and post graduation from Aligarh Muslim University. Her special interests are cornea, ocular surface, eye banking, and corneal transplant. And she is currently the medical director of the Rishikesh Eye Bank. She has over forty publications to her credit, and uh, Neeti loves to dance and cycle. Uh, over to you, uh, Puneet, for a more personal introduction to of the panel and uh, the discussion to follow. Thanks so much, Doctor Vidya, for having us. Uh, it's a very exciting topic, and I must say, uh, it's been the highlights uh, of my coming to AIMS Rishikesh, and uh, you know, learning uh, formal surgical pedagogy and uh, medical humanities. And uh, Dr. Raj Lakshmi was one of the driving forces there. Uh, she was, uh, although she was, you know, setting limbs uh, 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 right, but I think she set a lot of other things right as well. And uh, she was a real force which pushed. we had a very dynamic uh, director professor ravikant who actually pushed the program uh, and uh, you know geeta is our effervescent bubbly the champagne which uh, gets us all together and uh, uh, neeti is the you know the dancing force who uh, you know puts all gets all the evidence for the medical humanities bit and all that so i must uh, confess i think I, i'll share my uh, 
screen and uh, is that visible yes yeah so uh, so with that without further ado i think we can just uh, crack on with yeah so i think i i must uh, disclose uh, i'm not an expert on this we are all advanced learners uh, and it's because of a previous episode of marvelous medicine that uh, dr vidya very rightfully uh, caught that you know one of the things exciting things which was happening here was uh, medical humanities i was introduced to it formally only in aims rishikesh although you know bits of it we have we are practicing everywhere it's pretty much like saying that anybody can do management then why do we need an mba so i think it's more a more formalization of what we uh, need to do all through medicine uh, and uh, i think uh, in all these uh, modules that we do knowledge and skills uh, it's much now we are getting knowledge at the drop of a hat you just need an internet and a device and you can connect to all the branches of the middle meningeal artery we don't really need to mug them all up uh, and uh, it's it's the how we interact with patients how the patients interact with us how we interact with our colleagues uh, the entire bigger picture the macro environment uh, is where medical humanities plays a huge role and it's much more important to de develop the affective uh, domains which has al always been uh, you know missed i'd also like to declare a conflict a uh, conflict is of a deep interest in this subject uh, and i think shall stay for the rest of my life uh, uh, so uh, i hope we continue with this uh, and we are able to sort of uh, uh, spread this uh, in other places just as we got the light from a whole lot of other places you know like ucms and uh, ludhiana amritsar a lot of this, uh, uh, places which in the south which are uh, using humanities very very effectively at aims we have a slight edge that we are able to change curriculum without too much of uh, fiddling from the medical councils uh, don't know how long that will last so uh, you know just to uh, put into uh, sort of what interested me into medicine uh, you know was this movie tere mere sapne where there's this idealistic doctor whose ideals go all awry and you know this movie I, i was inspired by this movie but this movie was inspired by the aj cronin book the citadel aj cronin himself was a doctor who was in the who's worked in the welsh uh, uh, you know um, uh, mining towns and uh, this is a true story of about how uh, badly the, the system was there in uh, you know in in england uh, at that time and uh, the interesting thing about this book is that this was one of the few books which also you know even in nazi germany where everything at third reich where everything else was banned aj cronin's books were actually available it won the american awards as well and it laid down most importantly the foundation of nhs so it's actually the medical humanities bit which laid down the you know the which is perhaps still arguably one of the best systems of medicine despite the fact that everybody cribs about it Uh, it's still one of the best which is not sold it's sold to the insurance industries completely or like us to the private uh, uh, you know uh, uh, medicare so uh, so so i think that seeds of uh, medical humanities have always been there traditionally in india you know this very popular uh, painting of uh, sushrutha it's probably apocryphal you know and it's just been uh, you know you see it one place and then it you see it everywhere uh when you know it was an apprenticeship surgery was an apprenticeship medicine itself was a, an apprenticeship and you can see all those uh, helpers who are not only learning uh, the art of medicine but also the science of medicine but also the art of how to deal with the patient you know their their physical anesthesia uh, or uh, you know help in all those things uh, is pretty self evident from beginnings of uh, indian medicine so it's not a western concept that we are trying to get in it's something you know in between i think we from an art it became too much of science too much of evidence based uh, and sometimes it's evidence biased because uh, you know a lot of the pharma the uh, appliance a lot of the industry uh, can take over a lot of that function and uh, you know uh, bias us towards one way or the other making us believe that uh, technology is uh, very very important so uh, you know this uh, uh, as far as this taxonomy of learning behaviors is there we we are aware of the knowledge which is now available on net you know the cognitive domains the psychomotor do domain is what we develop through all this and now uh, you know youtube and during covid we were it's the online webinars uh, which helped and but it's what what was lacking very formally is the attitudes uh, you know uh, the affective domain we we get uh, we get uh, a patient in the uh, in the uh, emergency 
but uh, a terminal malignancy, but should we be resuscitating her? Nobody's really taught us what are the criteria, what should we be doing, when do we consider for an organ transplant? You know, a lot of those things, who's the right person to deal with the patient? How should we talk uh, and things? How do we deal with our own colleagues? Uh, I mean, I think medicine has probably some of the most atrocious interpersonal relationships that I have seen. Uh, and I must confess that, you know, I feel uh, the learning general surgery kind of uh, Facebook initiative, the social media initiatives, the marvelous medicine kind of YouTube and, uh, you know, uh, online uh, webinars. Initially, it was death by webinar, but I think they are fantastic tools to disseminate these which are not available formally. So, I mean, I really congratulate you for uh, thinking of all these. Uh, uh, and the medical humanities really hones the emotional quotient, the adversity quotient, uh, you know, how to deal with it, prevents burnouts and all that. So it's, it's really that which we need to develop now for more formally. And I think in times to come, it's going to become much more important because even the patient can, uh, you know, tell you the same branches of the middle meningeal artery, looking at Medscape and all the other free open uh, uh, online uh, platforms. So very interestingly, you know, uh, I think uh, the Medical Council, initially the Medical Council of India, now the National Medical Council, uh, realized the importance of this and, uh, uh, you know, got the... ATCOM module, the attitude, ethics, uh, communication module, very, very important uh, document, I think, which was uh, one of the key changes in the, you know, between 2017 and 19. And they very quickly spread it out through all the medical colleges, got these foundation courses there, uh, and, uh, you know, stressed these uh, modules. Uh, I think Dr. Avinash Supe, who was chairing that, uh, the, the module uh, of that booklet, is, will also be joining us. I hope if he does, we'd like his comments as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, they brought about all these, uh, uh, you know, domains, the, these things which we need to understand, uh, you know, the social commitment, the attitudes, professionalism, reliability, communicate, communications, you know, I think it's single, single one of the single most important things. Uh, all, you know, we, 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 we don't look at uh, uh, anywhere abroad, they're looking at the mission statement of the person when they apply for medical colleges, whether it's Cambridge or Harvard or wherever. Uh, whereas we are looking at MCQ, uh, you know, we are looking at nerds at the one end of the uh, IQ spectrum, whether they have a passion or compassion, we don't know. So we can still, the good, good bit is that we can still hone that and, you know, push that. Uh, Professor Nandi has uh, initiated the Journal of uh, Medical Evidence and, you know, even though the name is Medical Evidence, there's a lot of uh, affective parts which he likes to stress and the, article, the articles, if you, you know, if you look, read through them, uh, it, there's a lot of feel-good factor about what we need, you know, people we admire, the student sections, uh, nursing sections, a lot of those things, which tell us people's feelings rather than just uh, pure, pure, pure evidence, you know, which sometimes can even be ma manipulated as we've seen in a whole lot of that. Vidya would probably remember the whole, uh, uh, you know, the activated protein C saga where everything came in NEGM, every single trial came in NEGM. And then, you know, we know, we all know what happened to that. I think that's the lesson we should be teaching uh, uh, our students how to look at evidence and how people can manipulate in addition to how to look at evidence itself. So, uh, you know, the specifics Gita and uh, Neeti are going to cover, but I'll just, uh, you know, I, I just want to give the, uh, the, the situations where we really need medical humanities. Uh, and the single most important I found was violence against doctors where, uh, uh, you know, every inquiry that I sat on, I found it was poor communication skills. Yeah, there were a lot of other things, you know, it was a, uh, you know, a, either in a, pr a private setup or even in a public setup, a lot of things, it was delayed in x-ray, something happened, this, but it's the final, you know, thing was that duty doctor did not come and see the patient, did not talk, did not tell them that it is a terminally ill patient, you know, alcoholic, cirrhotic, the relatives are seeing him and they bash up the doctor's skull open, that's, it's criminal, I mean, it should not happen, and if we have, uh, you know, uh, taught our people, medical humanities, how to handle this upfront, I think a lot of this can be prevented as at least some of it can be prevented or uh, dealt with at a much more, you know, uh, uh, easier way. Uh, finally, we have, you know, we have burnout, which is a student burnout. You know, we find uh, student suicides, uh, a midlife crisis, you know, when people have actually learned all their skills, the end of when to retire, you know, if at all, uh, you know, many doctors don't even tire, forget about retiring. Uh, interpersonal strife, we never teach Every doctor takes on a leadership role, but we never train them how to, uh, you know, assume that role. Uh, you know, they want to grab that power, keep it to themselves. How to, you know, uh, delegate, how to uh, share that. All that is not there. What ways to get the team together. 
you know, uh, we need to be, uh, you know, uh, at every meeting I have with uh, Professor Nandi or many of you actually who are there, I can see, uh, there's always a lifelong learning uh, thing that I learn. You know, uh, Adarsh, one of my previous uh, bosses, every vacation used to go abroad to, you know, so a lot of things you learn, uh, you know, avoiding medical hubris, humility, balancing that out. Uh, ethical dilemmas, which are the patients we don't need to resuscitate, we shouldn't, uh, how do we tackle unrelated donations, how to counsel them, some are compelled uh, either through economic or, uh, you know, how to get, I had this fantastic uh, colleague in uh, Cochin, Amrita, who used to go into this, I mean, I learned, he was my student, but I think I learned much more from him subsequently. Uh, he used to take go the social history of the patient and see whether he can afford uh, the immunosuppressives later. If he felt that there was an issue, he would go to the village elders and try and do crowdfunding. Uh, you know, look at all that. If he found that this patient cannot, he's come from a remote area, cannot even uh, get the immune. He would very kindly tr try and explain this is a very poor prognosis. There's not much point in your, you know, in a way. So all that we are not taught to do, but I think we need to, uh, you know, through the medium of medical humanities, try and uh, see how we can impart those uh, values. So it's not like, uh, not as easy as knowledge uh, is telling you the branches of that MMA. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, there are ethical dilemmas. They're all so looking at balance, looking at both sides of the picture uh, is, is very, very crucial. How to integrate it in the cultural milieus, you know? So we're all taught the Western values, but how do we integrate it in? So, you know, putting that, uh, that painting of Sushruta actually brought, you know, I think from Citadel, it brought us down to the, uh, uh, to the ground level. Uh, then how do we impact learning and practice as I was, you know, we were discussing uh, before, just before this, I was part of this fantastic Aspires project with uh, uh, the Imperial College London, uh, the Hootshur at uh, uh, Cape Town and some other centers all over the world, where uh, we were looking at the, the humanities approach to antimicrobial stewardship, where they looked at the psychology, the anthropological uh, things, how, who in the round decides the antibiotics should be changed, why? And then the interventions were sought to target those uh, things. And we had fantastic results from that. Uh, so uh, those are the situations I feel. I mean, if you just look at the term human, uh, human is just being human, but which is mandatory, but being humane, isn't it, hasn't it always been the essence of medical practice? And, uh, you know, uh, teaching compassion and benevolence is not, it's a role model issue. You see, if, if uh, it's just like that, you know, the t you, you tell the child, don't, don't tell lies. And the telephone rings and says there's an income tax officer for you and he says tell him i'm not here so you know the child is not hearing what you're saying he's seeing what you're doing so uh, we all need to be good role models as teachers uh, so you know we just last sunday we had we showed patch adams and we had a fantastic you know our new director uh, she joined in uh, it was her first day and i was so surprised informally she just walked in and joined in the discussion and the kids were you know uh, very honestly giving that, that they changed their perspective from one single movie alone so we, we hope to, you know, continue this every Sunday. Next Sunday, we're hoping to do My Sister's Keeper, which deals with uh, assent and consent and all that. Uh, it's important, you know, because as we are in, in India, we're going towards uh, a lot of privatization. We need to feel the pulse of the patient rather than just the, you know, the affordability. Uh, and again, you know, uh, the patient steps into the uh, emergency area and we are HBTLC, DLC, CT scan is ordered. So the high touch is being lost for high tech. So again, that's a part of uh, medical humanities. And I'd just like to end with this, uh, you know, uh, concept of Ikigai for ourselves for, you know, as we, uh, I think this, this particular uh, Japanese concept really changed my, you know, it's a Venn diagram of uh, things, you know, what is the ideal, what Ikigai is, uh, what gets you to get up every morning? What is it that, uh, you know, your raison d'etre, what do you get up for? Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a Venn diagram intersection of things that you love doing, things which you're good at, things which you can be paid for, and what the world needs really. So it's the where it intersects in the center is a Kigai. And if you don't get any of those, you can get satisfaction, uselessness, you know, all these uh, various uh, Vens in between. And I think this uh, concept, we, if we teach uh, to our uh, students, a lot of, you know, a lot of them stress on how much to earn. Whereas it's how, what they do with it, uh, that, that is more important, how they invest it, you know, even things like that. We don't have any formal system of doing that. My daughter was doing a, a law uh, and, you know, her, in her LLB at Calcutta and her LLM at Harvard. They're teaching them sessions on how to, 
you know, negotiate contracts with your employers. We don't, never do that. We tell them that, oh, medicine is very holy. And then we suddenly dump them into a, into a private, uh, we don't have NHS and we suddenly dump them into the world where they don't know, they don't want to go to rural areas. You know, there's uh, a whole lot of things uh, uh, which are there. So uh, th those are things uh, that, and we'd like to share our experiences at Ames Rishikesh, which was initiated by our uh, first, uh, you know, our previous director. And I can see, you know, I'm very excited. The new director is also very, very clued in, uh, uh, very informal and approachable. Uh, and, you know, uh, how we sort of uh, brought about awareness, ability, it's been very successful. I know all of you will say that AIMS, it's easy to change modules, but uh, I think it's been successfully done in many other centers. And I'd like you to uh, read this book, which is I really loved. Uh, these are, it's, the contributors are all people who've done this, you know, uh, uh, multi-author book. Uh, each chapter is a, is, a, is a learning experience. And I, you know, uh, anytime I'm free, I, I just uh, browse through this and I highly recommend that. It just came out during the pandemic. So just to paraphrase, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hippocrates uh, was paraphrased by Livingstone as, you know, we need to cure sometimes, relieve often, and comfort always. So, Geeta, do you think uh, medical humanities is the key? Okay, let's see. So, if you stop sharing your screen, uh, we can go to the key, actually. So, uh, welcome, everybody. And if you see my background, um, this is uh, actually, uh, there couldn't have been a better time because we're currently having uh, some fun shops. As you can, I'll just turn the side a little bit to make you see. So we are currently undergoing a medical humanities program and we are calling our sessions fun shops. And I'm really glad to see that uh, some of the people, Tanya just said she joined. So some of the people from this workshop current uh, currently running medical humanities workshop are also here today. And uh, I will now start uh, sharing my screen and talking about uh, what we are proposing. So is my screen visible? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. So um, as uh, Dr. Puneet just asked me, is medical humanities the key? So I would like to start by saying that medical humanities is all about opening up and activating your right side of the brain, which we often uh, leave unutilized. And the key to it, according to all of us, is definitely medical humanities. And I cannot begin the session without acknowledging uh, some of the people. Uh, till about a few years back, I had never heard of the term. I didn't know what it was, but we all learned together. And uh, part of my famer fellowship, all my mentors and the colleagues who um, helped me to actually understand what it is. And um, definitely, uh, Sir uh, Dr. Puneet has uh, recently uh, just now talked about our director who motivated us to start this department and also the current director, our dean. I mean, we we are, I am blessed to have this kind of management, our seniors, colleagues, there are so many people who are willing to understand what is medical humanities and take it forward, and definitely students and even the participants of various sessions. So I am, I am actually deeply indebted to all these people who made me learn what medical humanities is. And when I learned about medical humanities, I thought it was important to take this forward. I should not learn it and keep it to myself. It's not humanities if I don't share it with everyone. So um, we are definitely uh, trying to share with students, teachers, PG students, anybody. So, all right. So starting uh, what I feel about medical humanities. Now the in the current medical education system, I'm sure all of you will agree there is something missing. Our, uh, you know, we are studying, we all, uh, most of us are from, uh, like we have MD, MS, or even higher degrees, some are DM, MCH, but then we find something is lacking. We may be very good at our jobs, we may be in top shot universities, but we find there is something missing. So uh, I found this beautiful picture. So denoting a doctor, she's saying that I am more than books. I am not merely books. And I thought the answer was humanities. When we couple it with our medicine, it becomes medical humanities. And as in the last slide, the key is to activate, activate, and activate the right side of the brain somehow. It would be different for different people, but we just need to activate our right side of the brains. So just a repetition of what already has been said. So uh, why? So how I'm going to address this thing is using the five wives 
the five popular Ys, uh, Ws as are common in uh, PPTs. So why, I will talk about the why, how, what, all those things. So to address the emotional and psychological aspects, which are not taken care of by the standard curriculum as very, very rightly pointed out by Dr. Puneet just now. And the other thing is it does help us to address stress so um, I really like to uh, start my presentations by saying that there are times when we find that life is getting out of control. And, uh, you know, when we are in this burnout uh, situations, most of the doctors do end up while we are reading because of our studies, later because of our professions, because of our night duties, because of so many other things. So at that time, it is important to take control of your time and your energy. And this is exactly uh, what we do not do. So unless we are trained in this, unless we train our young doctors that you do need some kind of rescue time for your own selves. Otherwise you cannot do full justice to your patients. However intelligent you may be, however big institute you may be working in, you need to heal yourself first so that you can heal your patients better. So uh, here, uh, gone are the days when an intelligent doctor would be one who is merely having the bookish intelligence. So nowadays, everybody is realizing that there are so many types of intelligence. And here at Ames Rishikesh, when our medical humanities department was set, we all sat and we discussed for days and months together as to what really medical humanity, humanities means. And we all agreed that, and then we discussed with some students, we discussed with a lot of faculty, we all agreed that it is merely enhancing all our other types of intelligence. Whereas we have been doing it wrong, we've been only focusing on our bookish intelligence. So if you can see, for example, I'll give some examples. If you can look at the, this, uh, the extreme left side, the intrapersonal intelligence, understanding yourself. So there is, I mean, it sounds abstract, but there are methods. If you resort to medical humanities, you'll find there are methods. When you write stuff, narrative medicine, when you draw stuff, you can understand what is going on inside yourself. I'll show some of the things that I did and I under started understanding myself better. Then if we go around the, the circle, spatial intelligence. So visualizing the world in 3D might be films for some people, maybe going on some tours, looking at our environment. And then uh, the next one talks about understanding living things, reading nature. So some people have even set up gardening clubs and people are gardening and understanding things about growth and plants and this and that. This is also another type of intelligence. A musical intelligence, discerning sounds, pitch, tone. And uh, recently we have planned a musical uh, and adding the musical uh, part into our medical humanities. Uh, we realized that uh, music is not just about sound. It is about collaborating so many complex things. So if we include music, uh, music into our medical humanities, we find we can talk about, uh, you know, uh, adapting to uh, like, you know, getting too many complex things together and producing something beautiful. Uh, we can talk about teamwork here. So music is another thing which can immensely contribute to medical humanities. Logical. Uh, all of us will agree that if there are situations in all our medical fields, where whatever things we are specialists of, we need a logical brain. So mathematics existential crisis we face sometimes. So in today's session only, we were having a session on personality development. There was so much philosophy we talked about. So we do need to address these things as well. Interpersonal, through role plays. So it's an excellent theater. These are things that you know help us to understand how people behave as they do. Bodily kinesthetic. For example, some people are very good at sports. Neeti here is an excellent cyclist, dancer. So, you know, these are also things which help us explore our own selves. They add to our intelligence. Linguistic, as in creative writing, narrative writing, writing poems, so many things. So um, what we realized was when we expand our intelligence to all these zones, we are able to do more justice to our profession. We are better doctors. If we in expand all these intelligence, instead of just um, you know focusing on academic skills and our books and all those things. So I think these types of intelligence really need to be explored. So uh, then the next W is what? What really will happen when we look into all this, expanding all these kinds of intelligence? So it, it is seen through, uh, we had a beautiful uh, workshop recently. So most of the sessions, uh, the speakers concluded that it helps in increasing confidence, uh, promoting motivation, a sense of empathy, 
helps in better communication, doctor patient relationship, ethics, de stressing, as I just said, and helps, it also helps in improving organizations organizational skills as we need in our OPDs, OTs, laboratories, and then ultimately we become better doctors and better humans. Now, some of the things that I am mentioning uh, here, these are the things which I have tried each one of them in one little workshop or another. I have tried singing, I've tried, I mean, I'm not saying that I have done it. We have done a training and we have in inculcated all these things with medicine and we called it medical humanities because we found each of these things had the potential to uh, make our students better doctors and uh, uh, singing, dancing, narrative writing, writing stories, uh, designing posters, dramatics, as Niti will show you, uh, show you in a while. Photography, we had an awesome session yesterday and we found so many links of photography with medicine, graphic medicine, beautiful session. We had recently book reviews, puppet shows also, Ref re reflective writing. This is one of the ways to discover our own selves. Theater of the oppressed. I was so glad to see Dr. Navjeevan in the audience. I hope Dr. Upreeth has also joined. They were the people who introduced me to the world of the theater of the oppressed. And uh, sir, if you're uh, still here, uh, we would like you to share your views at the end when we are discussing things. Uh, awesome, an awesome uh, way to address medical hum humanities. Movie clubs, exhibitions, social works, TV shows, movie making. So these are the things that I have definitely tried and all of them worked to, uh, you know, in, uh, bring in the principles of medical humanities. Talking about some of those now. So for example, narrative writing. So the concept here is that uh, you, in, uh, you know, you could yourself indulge uh, we being medical college teachers, we often talk about how we will do it for students, but then you could do it yourself. So the idea here is that you introduce your students to pictures or incidents that happen, or you know, people write uh, people write about incidents. People write about pictures that are shown to them. They may write poems on them. These are just some of the things. For example, using this picture. So there is so much emotion in this picture. There is so much to talk about here. So these are ways to um, uh, you know um, provoke your students to think about trust to think about care, to think about so many aspects which we normally miss during our uh, conventional medical teaching. And uh, so one could even write about incidents that have happened. And uh, yesterday, uh, three days earlier, a student shared a beautiful poem on something. So, you know, there are so many things which can be explored with the help of narrative writing. Dancing. So uh, dancing, we had one session on dancing recently, and we've had many other sessions on dancing in our medical humanities uh, uh, department. So it does help to improve physical health, helps in weight management. Uh, people can get better coordination, agility, flexibility, greater self-confidence, self-esteem, which has been reported by so many people. So all this, this is how dancing also helps to our students, helps us to become better doctors. Now the role of books. I have mentioned just a few of the books uh, which I could include in this slide, but there are so many books. For example, The Little Locksmith talks about the effects of spinal tuberculosis, The Bright Hour Memoir of the Living and Dying, Dying to Be Me by Anita Murjani, such a, such a beautifully written, truly inspirational memoir which tells us about when she got cancer and then she has a near-death experience. And then she starts talking about, she says, after that NDE, I realized how I should have lived. Such a beautiful book, Dying for a Chat, which talks about you know, the importance of a good communication in healing patients. So these are some beautiful ways to become better doctors. To, uh, you know, we could even make, uh, introduce our students to all these things. And we have a good book club going on in Ames Rishikesh and a lot of uh, things are discussed. A lot of movies are there. This is just, I'm showing you some of them. Recently, we, uh, as Dr. Puneet said, we had uh, we uh, showed uh, Dr. Patch Adams and uh, Patch Adams is a beautiful movie which uh, highlights the qualities of a doctor uh, who talks about taking care, welcoming people. Knocked Up is a slightly naughty serial. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a web series. And it uh, shows a brash doctor with poor communication skill and imposing his views on a pregnant woman. And there is a, an accident happens and she becomes pregnant. But there are so many beautiful messages over there. Again, there is another clip from Patch Adams here about positive emotions. Grey's Anatomy, there are so many beautifully teachable moments in that uh, serial when you watch it. 
So there are so many examples. I am not talking about all the movies here. So uh, we could even explore our local cinema. So uh, we, in one of the workshops that we did, we uh, compiled a list of some of the Hindi movies and TV serials, which have such good messages. They're fun to watch. And then you could uh, discuss the medical message and help your students get, uh, become better. So you can make them thinkers by exposing them to all this. Then here I'm showing you some of the doodles that I did. So uh, I like to caption it by saying, ever caught yourself doodling uh, when you were in a long meeting or in a boring lecture. So these are some of the things which I did when I was definitely getting bored. And when I explored the world of doodles, I found that each of the doodles has a meaning. For example, the one where there, there's an elephant going away, maybe I want it to go away, but and my hands were expressing it, some subconscious thoughts were uh, like there. So the, there are so many ways to express yourselves and feel good. Music. So music, as I just said, it's not merely sounds. It's a sequence of ideas, plans, so much is there. And uh, you can even teach your students that it's a team which makes good music. You can teach them, you can talk to them that you need to coordinate, concentrate, even fine skill development happens. So much emotions can be depicted through music. So music is another uh, very good way to uh, enhance your medical humanities program. Okay, so having talked about just some of the modalities that could be done. So when, the next W is when. So uh, the MCI or the NMC now is saying that you could introduce it in your foundation program or you could do it, you know, decide any weekday, four to five when the students are free, five to six or any other time that suits you. For the postgraduates, it would be different. For the consultants, the timings would be different. Whatever suits you. Summer projects. What we are doing presently is a summer is um, ICMR STS project, which we just sent because I was very passionate. I advised a student. He loved the idea. And we sent it thinking that um, I mean, we were very, very doubtful that it would be accepted, but we were so happy. And uh, it's uh, an uh, ICMR STS project. So you could give it, uh, give projects to your students. And then uh, finally, I would say any time is the best time. So whenever you want, you could do this. And this is exactly what happened um, when we uh, did uh, just a few of us were there in the beginning. So you can see three, the people in purple are faculty members and the uh, those in greens are the residents. So we invited a lot of people, only six of us turned up and we thought, let's go ahead. Let's not cancel the graphic medicine uh, thing that we were doing. And we had so so much fun we just collected some stuff from our uh, houses we didn't have too much resources that time so we collected some things from our house and uh, you know you as you can see we were like so engrossed you can see here somebody uh, then we made this beautiful post poster and we really went crazy and then we made beautiful bookmarks we gifted to each other and finally as you can see in the extreme uh, right lower corner Subay ho gai mamu. This was a uh, mug that I just had taken accidentally, but I thought uh, all of us realized the power and the importance of graphic medicine as a part of our medical humanities club. And uh, we thought it's nice that we all realized that we should definitely go in for. So this is just one of the events. And Niti now will uh, take you to the journey of some of the other things that we have done, but not before I thank you and confess a small thing. So one of, uh, there was one of, uh, this was one of the days when I was feeling very low, the person sitting down and, you know, look, who looks upset is me. I was very upset and a junior colleague was around and he didn't know how to, you know, uh, get me to pep up and he didn't know how do I tell her to cheer up. So it was so interesting. I just burst out laughing when he told me, please go do your medical humanities stuff. He knew this is what would take me out of that uh, uh, stage of being upset. And I really burst out laughing. Uh, so uh, this is my introduction that I am presently totally, you know, in an OCD about medical humanities. I want that everybody uh, understands it, adapts it and uh, starts um, inculcating it in their course. And that is all for now from my side. And I will request uh, Niti to now share some of the activities that uh, we have done in Ames Rishikesh. Are you there, Dr. Niti? Yeah, mute yeah. please. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Geeta. And I welcome you all to this session. I'll just share my screen. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yeah. So 
uh, actually when this medical humanities department started at aims rishikesh and dr raj lakshmi dr geeta they asked me because i was totally into sports and all these things i didn't know like what is medical humanities how would be associated uh, with the, the like medical curriculum so my understanding now is that medical humanities teaches the doctors the art of medicine to understand the science of medicine so and i was very fortunate enough that this department is there at aims rishikesh and we are doing lot of activities now uh, again we are still in a very beginning stage we're just learning how to uh, implement these so i will be sharing few of the things we've done at aims so during the induction course of mbbs when they join the aims rishikesh they have an induction induction course so there's a 3 hour session where we introduce them to medical humanities and then we take few sessions on them just to make them understand how would they help in their uh, like their studies we in, uh, ask them to you know inculcate uh, the hobbies which they have forgotten when they were like during the childhood now because of the burden of studies and all they have forgotten to just inculcate and then uh use them to uh, recreate themselves to uh, use them for burnout and all those things and then associate it with uh medicine so this was one of the workshop uh with medical students i will uh, talk in detail about these workshop later on and then uh, we had another session with a nursing staff and as you all know that during covid uh, all the nursing staffs were actually burnt out they had uh, they were really in stress by like and scared also seeing the like the deaths in covid so it was very necessary at that time to take workshops with the nursing staff then uh, we also had this uh, uh, a beautiful theater workshop with the faculty uh, there was there's a dance and drama club of helena grady and this was conducted online so during this online session all the like uh, there were around uh, 20 faculty members who joined this club and uh we all enacted on the uh, the book of shakespeare and we enacted on the play macbeth and during this time you know i realized that even i can enact i can uh, besides dancing i was actually we were so happy during this workshop you can see how we all are dancing and you know uh, uh, saying our dialogues and it was really exciting so this was the last day of the workshop when we were posing with the mask and we were really very happy so and this is another workshop uh, which we named as samvedana so why did we do this workshop uh, with us uh, we did this workshop with the security guards so during covid they were the first contact with the covid patients and they were very very scared about getting covid and then there were lot of superstitions and all those things and more, many people many security guards they started resigning so we thought we should have a, a session with this and you know very interesting thing about this session was that uh, we took like our, around 350 security persons they participated and we grouped them into 15 person each and the very uh, a good thing about this workshop was that we all we asked them to sit in a circle where the resource faculty was in the center and we interacted with each and every person we talked about their hobbies so initially we talked about the covid what is covid what are the fears they have about covid 19 and what the most important fear they all had was that they would acquire covid and they would uh, bring that infection to their home and the kids could get infected so we actually told them about what are the like what are the most vulnerable population and then how to take precautions which almost all of them were aware of so by this and at the end of the workshop when we asked them like would you like to have such workshops again so they almost all of them said that yes we should have such workshops and they were very happy and very confident and also we asked them to send us whatever were their hobbies like they have forgotten now so just sketch or you know dance or music and they, they all send us uh, in our whatsapp group so this was a beautiful sketch sketch uh, made by one of the security guards and it was sent to us on whatsapp then uh, the present workshop which dr geeta is talking about we are still uh, like uh, going through this workshop now and this is totally fun like for me all these sessions together i am attending the full workshop and it's very energetic and i'll tell you what we do like during these sessions the first day 
in all these session we had a nice breaking session like here we tell them that nobody is a faculty nobody is a uh, junior or senior and we are all, all on the same platform and everybody should come out with some attractive adjective towards their name and during the end of these sessions you know the uh, students or whoever the faculty guards and all they get very used to it and they are they are uh, like very uninhibited so then they start talking so in the second day that we had this workshop theater and dance so here we gave them role plays and very interesting thing about these role plays were that the first year students mbba student we gave them real scenarios which we they face like daily in their life during the first year about like uh, some people weak in hindi language some people they uh, actually you know uh, they were toppers and they like top the institute came in the first prof and now they think that these um, uh, subjects are very heavy and very boring and they are not able to cope up so we gave them real scenarios they enacted enacted upon and then we had a discussion among the students like what is it right and uh, like what are they facing and how can they cope up with the situation so very important thing about role plays is that even the both the, uh, the audience as well as the participants they learn from it from the others experience then uh, the th uh, next day we had a graphic medicine as dr geeta told and there we told uh, told them the importance of cartoon how they can express their emotions in cartoon in a single cartoon and how can they design a comic out of it and the doodling which he showed uh, uh, like the, we had the session and this is a beautiful doodle which has been sent by uh, tanya one of our mba students and like she had a whole book on this thing so this was something very innovative and expressive uh, which actually initiated them to do these activities then the uh, next day was the narrative writing and here we asked them to uh, send us some narrative uh, on anything on any uh, poem or narration and then we uh, recite, like uh, talked about that narrative writing talked about the perception of the patients and uh, interesting th thing about these sessions are that the teacher is not standing on a platform or the resource faculty they are among the group they are talking interacting with each other so everybody they are very eager to you know speak about they are not inhibited they, uh, they don't uh, feel shy about these workshops and art and humanities was again a very beautiful uh, uh, session where we we showed them the art of like great painters and then we asked them what are the expression what are what does the uh, like the artist want to show and why this caption the teacher has been given to this all these things and it actually we found that lot of students were expressing themselves they were telling about these things so these uh, workshops they improve their uh, you know observation skills and uh, also communication skills then the workshop on photography was again an amazing workshop like we asked all the students all the participants to send up send us uh, all the photograph they have clicked and then we showed their photographs in this group and we then had a discussion about the uh, what are the good things about this photography how could you improve as we all know that photography is another very important part of our medical photography so they learn to take good pictures and then they try to uh, you know uh, tell their emotions and uh, everything about from these pictures and all and also these workshops they help these people in building team work leadership qualities they all work together we uh, today as um, in the personality development we had a uh, like they played a game where they had to decide something so two groups and they had to decide something within like one a few seconds so this tell builds up team work among them and as uh, hippocrates hippocrates said that uh, the art religion and science are the branches from the same tree so we all have forgotten that and you can see beautiful picture one is a sketch by our mba student and the other one a photography by a one of our faculty who sent uh, these pictures on our uh, like the whatsapp group depicting uh, beautifully human as a tree so and you can we had lot of discussion about these things so the scope of medical humanities is not just limited to medical students but it can be extended to other uh, uh, other specialties like nursing even i would say that the teachers who are the role model for the mbba student should actually uh, you know uh, learn new ways of teaching and should unlearn what was old 
so that would make them more creative and in, they could teach uh, medicine in a more interesting manner so this was the last uh, uh, this was all about what we are doing at aims and this was a very beautiful caption again by like uh, hippocrates like whenever the art of medicine is love there is also a love to, of humanity thank you so now i would uh, ask dr raj lakshmi to comment uh, give her comments about this hi everyone so i think uh, whatever needs to be said has been said uh, i'll keep mine very very short Rajneshmi, uh, if you don't mind, just come closer to the mic. Your voice is a little. Uh... Sorry. Um, is that better? Is that better? Yes. Okay. So uh, this was the three-year story of uh, the Department of Medical Humanities in Ames, Rishikesh, and uh, as all of us said, Puneet, Geeta, and Neeti, uh, we're all still learners. We really have just touched the surface. of medical humanities so what i would like to do in the next 10 minutes is um, ask some difficult questions uh, so until now it's been like a fairy tale so uh, there are cons i'm sure we still don't know uh, whether medical humanities is a fun thing whether it should contribute to us as people as doctors is it worth the time Uh, the students are already so burdened. Uh, should we add this to their burdens? So there are lots of pros and cons to this. And uh, if I can take the next five seven minutes asking difficult questions, this will also be food for thought for all of us. And uh, I've shared my email ID in the chat box, and it would be wonderful if even after this discussion. if people would get back please about uh, what they think so uh, some observations and some questions uh, the first thing is a rhetorical question uh, is uh, sorry again uh, raj lakshmi uh, volumes a uh, little low oh okay uh, can i i'll increase my vocal cord volume i think <laughs> okay sorry um The first question that I have is a rhetorical question. Do we need medical humanities? We all, I'm sure, will say yes. But can we think of some cons also for medical humanities? Uh, one would be the burden. Another would be uh, assessment. Do we assess outcomes? Do we just leave it? So what actually happens? Uh, Uh, to these modules because we need time to um, implement these and that seems to be a big difficulty so there are cons to it it's not all hunky dory so can we think of some cons and can we think of ways of uh, getting around them yeah so that is the first question do we need medical humanities the second question was the difficult question can we not just make do with hobby clubs so hobby clubs achieve everything that we think medical humanities will achieve which is better communication skills ventilation stress busting um lots of other things so uh, catharsis like we all discovered and like uh, puneet keeps saying you know dancing can be so cathartic for many of us we all move about our lives in so stiffly so the chance to dance actually makes uh, makes it's a very cathartic experience so the, will this will all that we've spoken about not be achieved by hobby clubs so how is medical humanities different from hobby clubs so we, because this needs to be justified to nmc and if we can make a nice watertight a uh, kind of framework i think we stand a much better chance of taking medical humanities forward so some thoughts on how medical humanities is different from hobby clubs can hobby clubs actually be a starting point and can we continue from there so that's the second question the first question was do we need medical humanities the second question is 
how is medical humanities different from hobby club the third uh, niti mentioned i think and what we all discovered is that medical humanities need to start with the teachers so i think many of us as teachers in medical colleges i think we need sensitization uh, to medical humanities because what tends to happen is that we teach medical students very very ideal things and the minute they step out of the classroom it's a very very different world outside so uh, the students are very confused so is it a good idea to start with faculty along with the medical students this is another point that i think uh, needs discussion um the fourth fourth question and my last is uh medical humanities is often labeled as uh, improving bedside skill bedside manner etiquette improving communication between the doctor and the patient um sometimes even ethics is included in medical humanities so a lot of things that i think should be taught as part of the regular teaching is uh, you know fired from the shoulder of medical humanities so this i feel is very very limiting and to the concept of medical humanities uh, the way i look at it is now or all of us now look at it is a much much grander and wider scope for medical humanities because medicine is not practiced in isolation doctors live in a particular milieu of uh, social cultural political economic uh, circumstances and often i feel that doctors are very isolated from these realities so should we not be engaging also with these other social scientists and economic economists and uh, uh, anthropologists and philosophers would is that not you know extending the scope of medical humanities and imagining it in a much grander uh, scale so uh, these are four questions that came to my mind and uh, if we can spend the next 15 20 minutes discussing with the audience i'm i'm very aware that there are many members in the audience with vaster experience than us so wouldn't it be wonderful to me if we can uh, listen to them and see what the others think about this can i hand it over to you puneet yeah thanks so much uh, raj and uh, geeta and uh, neeti for that uh, extensive exhaustive uh, uh, you know human approach uh so we have some experts some of the authors of the book that i had shown uh i think there is dr navjeevan is there would you like to give your comments dr navjeevan you are muted uh, if you can unmute uh shall i just repeat the question there is one request to do that certainly go ahead did i Repeat the question. Uh, yes, yes, Doctor Rajesh. Yes. Loudly. <laughs> Number one, do we need medical humanities in an already burdened curriculum? Uh, two, how is medical humanities different from hobby club? Can we achieve the same thing with a hobby club? Three, does everyone agree that? medical humanities sensitization to start with teachers and faculty and four can we have a much much grander vision for medical humanities to make us basically be happier than we are so uh, those were the four questions the mail id is in the chat box please Dr. Navjeevan, uh, if we could hear from you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me here. 
and I must begin by congratulating all of you at the Rishikesh Ames for taking things so far forward. Uh, just a few years ago, there was nothing on the plate, and now I find that uh, you really are piling it on. I must also um, acknowledge the efforts towards these of my colleagues in what we call Team Sun, which comprises of my friend and former colleague, Dr. Satyendra Singh, who is a renowned disability activist and has done a lot of work in the medical humanities, and my colleague and my wife, Upreet. Uh, together, we have uh, been working on this for some time now. Uh, first, I should, must begin by distinguishing between medical humanities and humanism in medicine. The goal is to produce humanistic doctors. Medical humanities, to my mind, is a slightly unfortunate term because we tend to think of everything that it encompasses within or related to the field of medicine. No. For instance, today, if you are reading Gita Shri's book, Gita Anjali Shri's book, Ret Samadhi, you are indulging in humanities. Those are the humanities techniques. It's the application of the humanities learning to medicine that constitutes the medical humanities. So by all means, uh, to answer your fourth question first, Dr. Raja Lakshmi, a grander vision? Absolutely. If ever you meet Dr. Kiran Seth, who uh, is the founder of the Spikmake organization, the largest student-based voluntary organization in the world. He will tell you very interesting stories that have nothing to do with medicine. What really uh, hit me was when he told us about how he got hooked onto classical music, Indian classical music, while he was in the US. And he said, I had heard Indian classical music in my youth, in my childhood. But I never thought of it for the next 30 years. And then it suddenly hit me that here was so much beauty and here was so much learning that I had ignored this all along. The humanities are something like that. They take years and years and decades and decades to take hold on you. And once they take that hold, you find you are close to retirement. And then you begin worrying about, why didn't I think of this before? Why didn't I do something while I could? Of course, a grand vision? Certainly, all humanities, if our students learn from us how to deal with the humanities and how to apply humanities methods, if they become readers of literature, if they become connoisseurs of art, if they not only write poetry, but if they read poetry. Reading Ghalib and Faiz, or reading Kedarnath Singh, or reading Ashok Pat Vajpayee and his illustrious brother who is a doctor and a lovely poet, gives you great insight into human behavior. On our own part, we have been indulging in theater of the oppressed along with the other things. I wish theater of the oppressed was easier to learn and easier to transfer. Because uh, if I remember right, uh, Gita, uh, accessed our workshop almost eight years ago and yeah, she still has that impact on her it's something <laughs> well so if it still has that effect that's a long-term effect of a single two-day workshop yeah i'm not amazed it happens to many people just like it happened to me so um along with all this we need to inculcate a sense of a democratic process with the people that we live with, our students more than anyone else. Whenever you find yourself saying, I told them this, please worry. They already know. And your telling them is not what is making them learn. They will learn by observing you. They will learn by seeing you do things. So do we need medical humanities? Of course we need, we need humanities in general. And that's Dr. Raj Lakshmi's first question. How is it different from the hobby clubs? It's not. This is something we realized very early on. 
And at UCMS, before I retired, we tried to encourage all new coming students to join one or the other hobby clubs in the college. And our goal was to have every student in one of the other colleges, uh, in one of the one of the other hobby clubs. You call them hobby clubs, uh, we call them groups or something else. When they're there, they have the support of their peers. And they have the support of their near peers. So a lot of mentoring happens. And a lot of mentoring happens that cannot be accomplished through faculty trying to mentor students because the distance between the faculty and the students is too large. Primarily, they don't trust you anymore. And the truth is that we don't trust them anymore either because we've grown in different directions. Is it a good idea to start with faculty and students? Absolutely, yes. Every theater workshop that we have done with every medical college that we have done it in has been a mixture of students, teachers, nursing staff, other staff, whoever might come. Diversity is something we need to embrace with open arms. Only then will we understand. Very recently, there is a thesis submitted by a person to the Harvard University. Uh, it's about the history of medicine in India from independence to 2015. It's worth reading. The author is Kiran Kumar. And the link is available on his site in Twitter. He writes how about how much of what ails medical education today, uh, not medical education, much of what ails doctors today has to do with caste. That's not something most people would say, but I must say that you should read that thesis. And to get back to my last little bit, people adept at the medical humanities are there amongst all of us. I recently lost a former colleague of mine. He would also retired just a year or two before me. And just a few days before he died, he wrote a little poem, just two lines. Darwazon pe zanjeeron se lage taale. Darwazon pe zanjeeron se lage taale. Ruh to mahir hai. Ruh to mahir hai. Dararon se bhi nikal jane mein. Dr. Anil Tyagi, former professor of forensic medicine, UCMS. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Navjeevan. Um, uh, I really look forward to the theater. I know Gita has been talking very highly of it. I read about it in that book as well. Uh, I think we've got a lot of other. Uh, Dr. Unikrishnan, are you there? Uh, would you like to speak? You know, he's uh, uh, an ENT uh, person who's used quizzing uh, a lot. Uh, you know, almost pro-level quizzing in Amrita in Cochin. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. That was one of the initial... Would you, would you like to talk about how quizzing you feel helps in, uh, you know... Uh, uh, th thank you, Dr. Pulitar. I've been uh, listening till now. And before I go to quizzing, can I just uh, also say that I'm a part of medical education uh, department in Amrita and very much involved in all these things. And now... I will be taking the EdCom classes actually, and till now what I've heard has been a huge, huge uh, beneficial, <laughs> beneficial for me because uh, the, the schedule is being set. So as per the NMC now, the, everything is set. So EdCom is a must. So there are five hours given for each thing. So like uh, we have been given various uh, um, competencies. So the competency, there are three, five competencies in EdCom. It's 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. 3 .3. So 3.1 is communication. This is basically as simple as history taking and all those things. So I was just going through some literature uh, to, to prepare for the class, which is yet to be uh, happen. So I found two, uh, it is so fascinating. I found actually found articles which have been uh, published in journals related to this. And I found two articles which I've saved actually, which actually specifies the movie scenes, so English movie scenes, some of which has already been covered by the speaker before. There's one article which has covered six movie scenes and they've actually marked out the, I can, I can, uh, Punit said I can actually send the mail, those articles to you. 
they've actually marked the scenes like it's a full article in which they've actually marked out the scenes this so and so movie so and so scene from you know 5 minutes say 10 minutes no, that that say that say. there's another article which covers some 10 movies so i've saved that and uh, i hopefully will be using that so uh, so those movies and the role plays are uh, hugely necessary for teaching the undergraduates apart from uh, what we ourselves do in the opd and all that so so that's an important thing yeah you think something actually if you remember in the uh, first uh, very first uh, epcom thing that we did together foundation uh, yeah 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 we we so the foundation we showed the tuesdays with mori yeah. and uh, uh, they were, I, they were I, fresh I, yeah they were fresh I, yeah, yeah just to yeah. finish that bit they were fresh 12th class graduates and yeah, by yeah. the end of that movie they could describe the features of that disease lou gerigs uh yeah, yeah, just surprising yeah. they know no, nothing about it they not yeah, in yeah, uh, yeah. neurology they don't know medicine yeah. so yeah, yeah. sorry go ahead yeah. you have yet to finish yeah. about uh, quizzing yeah okay yeah. can i remember some of the tuesdays mori actually I was just telling that madhubita was just joined back if you know uh that i remember that day it was a monday and you know we started the movie at about 15 20 minutes to go back to opd because it's my op day and then i could come back only towards the end when i came back and people were the dripping eyes and i thought kya ho gaya i i don't know i don't know the story of the movie actually so people were actually students were crying and this thing and then this aspect that you said so it was really a so yeah so all these are important so quizzing yeah so you know uh quizzing helps to develop the uh, many aspects of medical education and uh, i hope the article is published by now so i could have put it up for you know the article is going to come in uh, jiv uh, so there are a lot of aspects of quizzing that i have helped me in medical education so a couple of things are the uh, thinking out of the box so you know it's medical education sometimes it becomes especially in this day and of age the scourge of sleep preparation i i hope i don't offend anybody here when i say that uh you know the scars of mcqs uh, and the scars of uh, you know just preparing for any absolute it makes it inhuman actually you know the, the when the whole focus is just on the one question five options or four options and which is the right one nothing else you no know, totally that horse uh, mentality so that quizzing tends to take away you know a good quiz takes to take away that you, know, you open those blinkers and you look around and try to Uh, gather the things and uh, get the answer so uh, apart from that uh, when we talk of medical quizzes in quizzing it's not just textbook medicine it's so many other things that have happened in our milieu in and around us the social field the political field the cultural field the entertainment field where some medical connect would be there but it's not a pure medicine it's not a textbook thing so those questions when come up it encourages the students to you know like the this one example of uh, you know the starry the famous painting vincent van gogh starry nights so there's a lot of study that has been done about what vincent van gogh suffered from so there are many many theories he was simply mad or you know temporal epilepsy but there's also a diagnosis you know, i'm an anti surgeon so uh, venereal disease so they say the starry nights all those walls and these things is there side that it's basically because he used to get severe vertigo and then the cutting off of his ear out of the sheer tinnitus that he suffered that's supposed to be another uh, proving of the fact that he had venereal disease so you know that's an interesting uh, uh, aspect or there's a there's this question about uh, there's a whole description of various aspects of men no multiple endocrine neurological disease uh, what is it men is sorry i, I uh, neoplasia yeah. neoplasia ah, yeah 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 so there's a whole list of features which includes moles on the face and then think of one famous personality who had this so when you read the description you will realize that it's actually abraham lincoln you know when you see the photo you realize so you know so these things things come together it's not just about just that one textbook thing but so many para uh, textbook things which students learn uh, from this so yeah quizzing uh, definitely i think would help medical humanities and uh, before uh, taking leave i must again thank uh, all of you for not only uh, for the for this program and for just for the things that i've heard till now which as i said is going to help me in my upcoming edcom class for the ugs uh, thank you very much thank you punjab sir and uh, may i take leave if you uh, not time there thanks so much uni thanks so much yeah, for that yeah. you know in the part of the workshop that is currently ongoing here we used uh, dr upreet's uh, poem on uh, the uh, breast lump isn't it uh, and i can see she's there so uh she's uh, also you know the, the journal rhyme which she started so would you like to speak a little about that uh, i've read your articles and your presentations also i've seen hi thank you so much 
So um, I want first, of course, to to respond to the question on hobby clubs and um, the humanities. And uh, when Jeevan said that um, that is a wonderful place to start, but if you limit yourself to, I want to say that if you limit yourself to hobby clubs, then you're missing out um, on a huge powerhouse which uh, shows you the humanities actually, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, economics of healthcare or even, even economics uh, as such, when you talk about sociology, when you talk about, uh, um, uh, say, anthropology or history or any of these things, they help you to understand your place in life, why the why questions, you know, it's not just about what this illness is, it's also about why a certain piece, person reacts in this way to that illness. Why do I react like that to this patient's illness? Uh, what is the history that I'm bringing to this uh, interaction? So that is, those are the things that you can learn through um, an understanding of yourself and others. And that comes through humanities. It doesn't come through medical education, unfortunately. So yes, um, uh, you can start with the hobby clubs, but do consider bringing varied experiences and varied humanities tools to your teachers and to your students so that um, there's a better, a deeper, understanding and maybe you know the, at that experience of empathy experiencing empathy through surrogate um, say po whatever it may be but to trivialize uh, the humanities and say that it's poetry and it's um, dance and it's um, you know whatever the hobby clubs are I'm, I'm quite aware that people don't have sociology hobby clubs in medical school and they don't have history um, uh, or economics or any of these classes. So that was my response. And then um, through, through the, the through rhyme, the journal rhyme, we've been able to explore areas um, and to understand what other people are doing and perhaps to use some of those influences in our own lives. So having a forum where people can share experiences, why global, you know, global experiences, they could be experiences anywhere. That is, uh, that we felt was very important if uh, for people to uh, start believing in the humanities. When we first started off, it, people were very skeptical. And as you said, where's the time? But there has to be time for, uh, improving your students understanding there has to be you have to make time this is this is a critical competency and um, so yeah uh, people who are making time are finding great satisfaction and their learners are achieving amazing things in this world so hi shalini thank you preet and Thanks. i would like to share that the third partner their third partner, Dr. Navjeev and Dr. Upreet, their third partner is Dr. Satender. I had requested him to join, but he is doing something very interesting today. And I've asked him to share more details later. So he's doing something called photo voice. So I've asked him mm -hmm. to share. He could not be here uh, for this session because as we are doing this, he's uh, doing that workshop on something called photo voice. So uh, I would like to learn more from him about that. And when we do, we'll share more. Th thanks so much. I think it's it's a matter of pride that uh, uh, both our president, uh, Dr. Samir Anandani, was there at the beginning. We heard him. And I can see our uh, director who's just joined, Dr. Minu. She's also there. And uh, it was such a pleasure to have her. You know, we started the film club and she was busy with the health secretary. She just joined that day. And uh, with no formality or anything like that or any hierarchy or worry that who's going to come and pick me up and all that, she just walked into the film club and uh, you know, engaged in a discussion with the uh, with the students. What do you see, ma'am, as a as the role for this in uh, medicine and uh, teaching of medicine? Thank you very much. I think whatever you've said, Puneet, is music to my ears, and uh, this is something which I've always believed in. And I feel that uh, students and residents should all get exposed to this type of curriculum, if we may call it so. 
and this is something which is uh, which could even be a hidden curriculum in the clinical medicine and uh, what i think is that our cases which come and the way we discuss the role models the teachers they are the ones who would bring into the central stage the role of humanities while we are communicating with our patients because it does involve a lot of psychology it does involve a lot of guiding philosophy and of course your baseline history and uh, history means like knowing about the past is also something extremely important so i think uh, what we you are doing is a great thing i would think this is something which would bring a revolution into medicine especially the medicine which is being practiced in india and where so many things are happening uh, patients are you know threatening doctors so patients are not able to understand what the problems of doctors are and the doctors not able to understand what the problems of the patients are so as we know that uh, history um, the medicine is an art it's more of an art than a science and uh, i do do believe in sir william osler's you know uh, philosophy that a good doctor treats a disease and a great doctor disease a patient treats a patient with a disease so to understand the patient i think we have to have this kind of background and we have to have these values which are instilled into us so that we have empathy and understanding of other people's problems so i think um, i would just like to just share my experience where i worked with dr jeffrey curlin who was who wrote a book called my own medicine because he suffered from uh, hairy cell leukemia and he's written everything in his book and how your empathy increases or changes when you suffer from a problem yourself and uh, how your life becomes you know a life in medicine itself so i won't say too much but i really congratulate you uh, dr puneet and dr geeta for uh, bringing out such excellent sessions with the students and they really enjoy them i think that's the best part of it this really helps them build re resilience because that's something which is lacking and uh, i was just reading about you know some of the resilience measurement tools which are there which it's become a whole lot of science now and uh, we need to do that for our students and residents so thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak and i really enjoyed whatever was going on right now thank you thank, thank you so, you so much. much thank you so much ma'am and i think uh, one of the you just mentioned about dr satinder also so you know one of the things that i feel this is a very uh, a good way to sensitize uh, not just students but i think teachers because i i realize this generation the yes. one thing that they are better at is uh, they are more woke you know they are more uh, in tune with uh, issues like lgbtq which uh, you know our generation is much more judgmental on mm -hmm. that the you know the the oppressed the uh, uh, the disabled uh, consciousness of all that we can bring about through medical humanities and that's another place we need to push that subtly uh, we did this with film workshops in kerala the kerala museum uh, we used to get the uh, you know transgender artists or you know the uh, the uh, directors for those movies also to give talks and suddenly it became you know by the time i left it was a very popular thing that we had started there so i think a similar thing we need in medicine and i think like dr girijadath sharma uh, very 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 uh, you know uh, sagely said uh, in the chat box that uh, we need to have these sessions for the teachers i i completely completely agree because you know unless we can train the we train the trainers uh, we not you know it's going to be a little difficult uh, when uh, so a classic example was you know hand washing in amrita uh, we the uh, audit done by the infection control team showed that the worst killers were the uh, cardiac surgeons you know themselves so the, the our infectious disease specialist she made the all of us you know the all the surgeons take classes for the nurses and gave us slides so and you know it was i was surprised to see uh, the change in attitude because you know she said uh, i said you know we are doing why you these the nurses are good she is not the nurse it's you guys who are who need the and when you're giving classes and showing seeing those slides you're ashamed to not do it in front of them subsequently so you know there are lots of ways that we can bring about instill those changes because i think we are a much more hierarchical uh, you know uh, society we still hesitate to call dr raj you know rather than saying raj even across uh, bombay when she can't even you know, punch me on the nose uh, 
so you know i think we, we, we these are ways to shed those uh, barriers as well uh, i can see rajesh uh, shiv prakash uh, here is he still there uh, he's uh, he uh, pleasant surprise to see him I, i i don't know how he got the link uh, he was a former colleague in cambridge so i think uh, i could see a lot of comments from you about the nhs would you like to comment on that rajesh lovely to see you after what uh, 15 years <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you too I and mean, it's one, one good thing of facebook is that i saw i came across this so thanks for for turn you to posting this and for everyone i mean i know puneet for a long time we were in cambridge together and i'm a transplant surgeon in london and i'm in india now to launch a royal college of surgeons workshop but i really applaud the effort what has been done here because this is amazing i mean i really wanted to join this simply because i think the thoughts expressed is absolutely valid and just a few comments i would suggest uh, i mean i did put a note in my post that the biggest impediment we have in uk is the trained the doctors the consultants these are the impediments so what we did and what we have done is we got a large grant to introduce students to come to healthcare so we introduced this concept into students who want to become a doctor or a nurse or a physio so therefore when they come to medical school or a nursing school or doctorate school they already have these concept and what i do as a year 5 lead for medical education in queen mary every top disease we do when we teach them we bring in a patient onto the stage so we just don't tell them about the disease we bring the patient in the patient spends about 5 minutes either in a video or in person to express exactly what their problem is so it becomes human so the students walk away realizing that and picturing exactly what colleagues say Uh, and i think it, it's really amazing that you know aims has taken a lead on it and i hope it spreads across the country because it is absolutely essential to transform the healthcare the final uh, one other comment i would say is uh, i mean i was in tamil nadu health summit giving a talk uh, two weeks ago and i note that there is a clear drive about looking at these sec- these domains as part of healthcare so therefore i think certainly this awareness is uh, initiated by you or many people has been taken up the only query i have to people is what does everyone think about including the patient in these efforts because we are talking about including nursing colleagues and all of the people but where does the patient fits in and how we can bring them on to these kind of modules or the, in the curriculum so yeah, but well done everyone for this yeah. i think i think that's a very good uh, point because i don't think that's one thing we lack in india is patient advocacy groups i think with that that's another topic for you for your uh, one of the future sessions because i think we really need those we have small time stuff like stoma clubs and all that but you know advocacy groups like we had in this uh, that aspires antimicrobial study i was telling about we actually had uh, patient uh, representatives on the board of that uh, uh, you know stewardship program as well uh, i is the rajiv mahajan here the person who's the author of that book or is this the orthopedic surgeon anya has her hand up uh, uh, yeah, so Tan- i think tanya is uh, would be uh, that's the uh, one good thing i like about these sessions is it since it's free for all it's not just uh, eminence based we we do get the picture from uh, you know the floor the both sides uh, so i think uh, tanya is one of the students who has taken a very keen interest in all these uh, activities at aims rishikesh so would you like to give your side of the picture uh, no praise just uh, uh, you know don't don't gush too much just uh, <laughs> uh, uh, just give your you know uh, preferably the you know ways that it impacted and things like that you know what could be done to make it better yeah exactly yeah uh, shall i speak <laughs> the floor is yours uh good evening all the teachers here uh, i am really glad to see matlab uh, i was uh, when i was in my very first year or second year maybe geeta ma- geeta ma'am uh, told us about medical humanities uh, we weren't very uh, like aware of these things matlab ma'am usually used to take uh, these session in between <laughs> pgs and you matlab i didn't uh, have this exposure to medical humanities per se and then suddenly i got this opportunity because my friends icmr project got selected and i had i always had this um, interest in um, like extra curricular activities like so much you can see pictures behind also <laughs> so i always uh, i always had these uh, i always had my interest so i volunteered for the same okay i'll conduct the events i i will uh, 
like had to conduct the events with the uh, geeta ma'am and puneet dhar sir and neeti ma'am so i got this opportunity and the very thing i want to share today is that uh, i am uh, i used to be quite an proactive person my very first year but as the course of time uh, my answer responses just decreased so today on uh, matlab uh, any time na teacher used to ask you okay who is going to perform this skill and who is going to perform this skill so i usually like hesitate to during these workshop only uh, my hesitation my hesitation uh, actually broke uh, actually like broke into pieces like uh, i just felt like you know no no i want to learn more uh, i want i should break my uh, hesitation uh, like that so today only there was a skill slab uh, on uh, this uh, neonatal resuscitation so the teacher asked us ki who is going to perform the cpr on this newborn child so i just raised my hand such straight up like i always do so that time i felt like okay in this one week span only i just uh, i just like my hesitation just went away and i was and i felt like uh, my curiosity uh, developed more to learn my curiosity developed uh, from the past like from past one week i attending my lectures i am getting so much from this and i i was quite scared because my if doing such sort of curricular activities i would develop right cerebral hypertrophy some day because i am using my right side of the brain too much and left side of brain would be, would would be going to atrophy or something like that but uh, in the past few days i am actually seeing the changes in myself because doing all these stuff now i am able to grasp more so that's how it impacted me uh, i think medical medicine should be the part of our curriculum just to learn more because it it has impacted my life like it just boosted my confidence to a level that i can't even imagine so thank you geeta ma'am thank you so much for this so thank you so much for this opportunity thank you, thank you so much tanya i think it's an important thing that you uh, highlighted about disinhibition because one major thing that i uh, you know difference i note from the kids here versus uh, uk also they join after school so cambridge uk and cambridge us where they go after actually college they are much more confident uh, they don't have any inhibitions in speaking whereas all our guys we have to push them to speak and i think humanities uh, does make them because each of them are good at some bit of it so either in theater or in you know doodling with the kinesthetic or whatever you know they have different uh, levels of intelligences in in various other domains so i think uh, utilizing those we we can harness their uh, you know uh, uh, the positive side of their brains to be more active more uh, you know engaged in uh, learning and i think we switch on all the learning centers there enough that talk showing that we switch on the learning centers much faster uh, if if uh, all these are ho- well honed so i think we've really really uh, stretched uh, vidya's uh, hospitality and uh, i think we should uh, probably uh, come towards a sort of a conclusion is there anybody else geeta you want to call or vidya is uh, uh, no uh, radha krishna posted it yeah, on sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that you know most of us probably don't know anything and uh, ravi shankar sent a personal message to me the uh, minute he saw the poster what is uh, medical humanities in fact uh, dr samiranandi also replied in by mail vidya what is this so uh, i i think uh, most of these people should have got uh, an answer though it's not a one line answer it's like running to pages but uh, nevertheless uh, radha krishna for the last word to say after <laughs> after one and a half hours what's your yeah, what frankly you this morning i was googling to find out what this subject is <laughs> what is mentioned in google i couldn't really understand i know that google understood it <laughs> and this actually very refreshing and very eye opening and brain opening and what not and actually a, a lot of lessons for you know uh, you know take take in personal life clinical practice hospital practice and so on and this i think we need to go a little deeper into each aspect of these uh, you know to understand them better it actually is good uh, that uh, um puneet is in academic institution and as dr rajesh was mentioning that is more for doctors and students and you know and uh, we being uh, corporate clinicians uh, we need to know a little more about how uh, patients can be included in this uh, domain and how we can in fact and actually i thought uh, you know i missed the bus because you know it's so late in our career but as dr naujeevan rightly points out you know it's i mean no it's never too late i think uh, th- this opens up and i'm sure all the um, participants you know they, they'll think about it when they see the next patient or meet the next student it's a wonderful session and i think uh, vidya you got many many speakers now and many many topics <laughs> <laughs> and they can carry on this for a very long time very 
very refreshing to see many uh, uh, new aspects of medicine thank you so much pune thank you so much <laughs> thanks well, uh, it's, never too, it's never too late uh, uh, radha i started quizzing after 40 years with uh, unni in amrita just two years just two years before i left and this one of the things i felt very bad about leaving cochin uh, and here also i think we, i was a late a late starter even in this but it's been uh, you know enjoyable and the fact that you can change so much for the positive i think it's good i'm so grateful for vidya to catch on in my previous session for that one line and said you know i'm not going to leave you for this i, I still remember the way i was hoping to get the people from ucms and all since i didn't know them i'm i'm glad to have met them all here uh, i was hoping to get them actually and you know do a more uh, formal thing but since you know uh, you sort of buttonholed us into a, a time and a date so it's, but it's good i'm so glad they were all able to join and given i'm i'm sorry abhinash supe couldn't join who uh, sort of pushed this in the edcom module he was stuck in an emergency but i i, I think uh, we we'll probably need more sessions on this on more specific things like the theater of the oppressed you know the movie club bit like what unni was saying that you have you know if we actually give suggestions for books and all that uh, it'll be fantastic thank you so much radha and vidya for this opportunity so uh, ravi you have your hand up uh, so uh, no, i was going to say that from a personal uh, can you put the camera on uh, ravi oh uh, okay uh, well i i was just doing what suma usually does which is basically walk so apologies um so i um uh, what i wanted to say is that first of all vidya thank you for this session uh, i know i was one of the first to ask you what it was and you asked me to tune in to figure out what what medical humanities was about and i realized that i've been practicing it for a while without knowing what it was the story of my life but um you know one of one of the things that i have found by indulging in a lot of these non medical things uh, in addition to everything else it does is that it allows you to focus so much better on what you're doing so you know if i if i take off into music or into literature or you know into temple architecture or something like that or you know review a dance performance or something like that it always brings me back to how can i apply some of this to what i'm doing so i think it it sort of helps you make those connections as well um that was uh, i i mean we 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 heard about a lot of other things in terms of empathy and things like that yes i agree with that but it also helps you become better and more skilled at what you do i think uh, tanya the medical student uh, did point out that it helped her you know uh, get over her inhibitions but much more than that i think as more people indulge in it they will realize that it makes them so much more focused when they get back to medicine for instance which is my experience with it of course i was doing it without knowing that it was medical humanities so that was the beauty of it now that i know it hopefully it'll continue to remain so yeah, okay. can i can i uh, ask one more person i i thought he i couldn't see his uh, this thing so uh, dr anand bhartan i meant if you remember i mentioned him in my previous uh, thing session as well he's there online and uh, he's one of the youngsters whom where i learned a lot from on uh, uh, you know the benefits of a rural edge and i think that's one fantastic opportunity we have in india of exposing our students our kids to uh, a rural setup and you know uh, some of the centers we've seen together uh, and sub sorry separately uh, you know we have fantastic centers in gudalur has this adivasi hospital you know uh, shaila and uh, 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 uh nandukumar nandukumar yeah and the settling Nandu at uh, abay bang and uh, you know gadchiroli so uh, every kid who's who's gone there i found them uh, you know uh, in touch with their soul their humanity uh, also and uh, my son also went to some of these centers and you know i saw a complete different change in them when they when they come back so anand would you like to tell us a little about that uh, i think it'll need another full session but just briefly because i think we've overstepped uh, a bit uh so thank you uh, it wasn't uh, uh, actually the subject is new to me but i found that can uh, put a camera on <laughs> sir i'm in pretty good prepared actually that way i mean uh, just sitting simply with my home grown dress not formally dressed um so uh, yeah extremely informal you should have figured that out by now <laughs> so i figured that this is something that we really missed through our entire training and uh, the training i think was meant to make us uh, good human being and to live a life which is good 
but I found that I had become a machine who learns how and knows how to operate at the end of my career. By what Sir said, I think by traveling to rural hospitals, meeting people there, I think I'm learning humility, learning uh, what is really required in India. I, I think I've come to a close conclusion that uh, what is really required in most of India is not doctors like me doing transplants or high-end operations. We need good human beings who will be able to stand on the ground, see how people suffer, adapt technology to uh, how we could help people who are suffering in the remote corners of the country uh, and not use technology as a thing to attain you know, uh, glory and fame through the profession or, or make a lot of money. I mean, I think that's what I've learned. And uh, I think this is, somebody said that I missed it, that this could be a fantastic starting point. I mean, you cannot go and give dry lectures to uh, MBBS students or anybody uh, telling them make good doctors or even be a role model like uh, Dr. Puneet Dar, who's one of my role models, and say, I mean, I expect that everything will change. Uh, I think uh, you introduce it to them in a very different way, things like this. You get to uh, embrace them into your fold and then show them how to live rather than how to make a living. That's it. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Adlashmi, do you, would you like to say any um, closing comments? Not really, except good night. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shot. Uh, Dr. Geeta or Dr. Neeti? Neeti? Anything you'd like to say? We thoroughly enjoyed interacting with you all and learning from you. Thanks. So, Radha Krishna, after uh, Puneet's last uh, episode on marvelous medicine, we both decided we have to go to Ames to do, I mean, Rishikesh to do bird watching. Now we have to add a, a medical humanities session with his team. Uh, actually, we have a we have the one of my students who actually taught me bird watching is there online also. Sabrish, I can see him. They did a fantastic session on Teachers Day in Amrita and Cochin. On uh, uh, I mean, it was mind blowing. I've just seen the you know the uh, uh, the booklet which they made out of it. Uh, I will I can try and share it in the YouTube link when you have it. Uh, absolutely, you know, professional level stuff uh, exhibition they organized, and I was surprised to see that there was so much talent hidden there. So I think, you know, like, uh, like the theater of oppressed in, in UCMS and so many other things, we could use a variety, you know, we could indigenize, we, we could uh, uh, adapt to our local areas. Rishikesh is fantastic for, uh, you know, bird watching or nature watching or, you know, uh, adventure sports. Every place will have its, uh, you know, uh, uh, ideal thing that can get people together. It just need not only be uh, paintings or books and all that. So, I mean, uh, fantastic opportunity. Um, thank you everyone for joining and making the session so interactive and uh, there are still so many people logged in though it's been one and a half hours. Um, uh, thank you Puneet for mentioning that word in your talk which kind of uh, you know finally got us to today and uh, like you have introduced me to so many others with whom we could do follow up sessions. So thank you everyone for joining and uh, we meet again next week with another episode of Marvelous Medicine. Uh, till then take care and stay safe. Good night. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I really enjoyed your session. <laughs> Thank you. It was yours. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but we got an opportunity through you only. <laughs> <laughs> so please uh, do keep us informed about any other sessions you'd like to do. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. And thank you, everyone.